Welcome back to another episode of the Corporate Cowboys Podcast. My name is Alex, as always, your host. Today's episode, well, we need a proof of life first. It's Thursday, March 2nd, 2023. And if you don't know, if you're listening to the podcast for the first time, the Corporate Cowboys Podcast is focused on helping you, assisting you develop yourself professionally first in order to attain the status, the state of being a consummate professional. Now, this is a a cathartic mechanism for myself. I mean, it's my own form of therapy, being able to think through difficult questions regarding corporate maneuvers and and uh, strategies, plans, plots to undertake in order to better one's self professionally, right? So it always depends on the context. We've had different we've had professionals at different levels in their career approach us with questions in the past. And for the most part they've they would much rather these questions and answers remain private, right? So if you want your own personal session, our rates are more than reasonable. And if you don't have a trusted circle of associates or, or friends, right? Friends that are actually out to help benefit you and help contribute to your ultimate improvement, then you can hit us up. We will be that circle for you. Right. It's what we do in our day to day when we're not getting our own hands dirty. We're helping others clean up. You know, if you clean up nicely, you move up in proportion. So today's question is coming from r slash career guidance. And the question is how to find how to find a career if you have no passion or interests for anything. And now you see why this might be a delicate, sensitive topic for some, where it's it's much easier to just get these questions off of Reddit, right? Because some of uh, these hypothetical clients are willing to put themselves out there. The clients that we service, they might be higher level. They might be working at a popular firm or a notorious entity and don't want to be exposed to any degree, right? So whatever goes on between us is kept between us. If you find yourself in a position where you need help or you know an associate that does, have them reach out to us. Do that. On Instagram, you can DM us. We can set something up on a private encrypted chat. Our handle is at Corporate Cowboys with a Z at the end, as always. And on Patreon, there are multiple tiers there, some of them which offer a question and answer feature. So it's more personalizable, if you will. We're uh, on Rumble, on YouTube, and wherever podcasts are distributed. We have a couple of donation links floating around. So if you want to pitch us a dollar or a mill to uh, keep this operation nonprofit, right? That'll go towards business expenses, legal fees. As always, I say office supplies, stationery, stamps, and ammunition. So the question begins with, or the body to this question begins with, please bear with me. And we will. We will. I mean, that's what we do. We're, We're patients. We're actually interested in hearing about what you have to say. I mean, if you go to the internet and expose your vulnerability as far as career development. I mean, the least you could expect is someone to take it seriously and give you a positive comment, a positive constructive criticism that you could or could not follow, right? What we're about to contribute now, you want to take with a grain of salt, right? Because you're not live we this isn't an in-person interview 
So this hypothetical client, if they are listening, shouldn't construe any of this to be legal advice, right? That's our disclaimer to anybody listening to the podcast. Don't get us in trouble for what you heard us say. If we haven't engaged you personally and we're not liable to you, we don't owe you anything, then you have no right to this opinion. It's not even well-informed. So that disclaimer is up front. They say, please bear with me, right? I am 29 years old, not, not much younger than I am, right? I live in New York. I graduated college with a bachelor in computer science. And to this day, nothing excites me. I still can't find a field that I want to work in. I currently work as a mechanic and I really do not enjoy the work. I'm not even good at it. <laughs> More than likely, if, if it doesn't excite them, I mean, then they're not going to take an interest in doing a good job. If nothing excites them, you see, I'm going to begin. I'm just going to begin tearing them up. This uh, post is rather long. The body on this is rather long. So, typically, what I'll do is I'll read one or two sentences, maybe a paragraph, and then provide some some side commentary, right before I give whatever level of informed opinion I can muster, right? But again, what you hear from us, you can take notes on, whether it's on paper or in your mind. But if it's criticisms and you find yourself in the same position, if the shoe fits, lace that bitch up and change your ways. You want to strive to be a consummate professional. You want to develop yourself professionally and find ways to do that. And I can help. We can help by providing a blueprint. By providing, by overlaying a schematic of sorts. Of questions you can ask yourself. Questions you can ask your associates, your manager. Questions you can ask of the organization you are working with or work for. Right. Ultimately, our goal is to create corporate cowboys that feel empowered, that know how to negotiate their worth and elevate elevate their status to that of a corporation where they can negotiate on an even playing field. Again, you don't have to work for corporate. You can work with it and get paid proportionately. It says, every day after work, continuing here. Every day after work, I force myself to learn programming. I do it because I want a career. I want a job. I want to make just enough money to live a life. I forced myself to learn HTML, CSS, JS, and they seemed easy enough. However, every time I surf the internet, all I see is that everything I learned is not even close to being enough. And that you need to learn a ton more things such as github slash java slash react dot js slash node dot js slash angular slash mysql in order to even land an entry level job. This is extremely overwhelming and makes me think that if it's painful, that painful to learn it all, then programming is also not a career that I should pursue. And they put a question mark on that, which is why I did that that last inflection, upward inflection on it. It's not something I should pursue, right? So they listed off a bunch of shit that they should continue learning, right? Because they haven't even scraped the surface of computer programming, and yet they've already gotten discouraged, demotivated, on continuing down this path because of everything else that comes with the territory, right? But you heard them, or you heard them, you heard me read that they want a career, they want a job. And they had enough initiative to start teaching themselves. Now, this isn't something that interests them, right? This isn't something... This isn't something that excites them. So obviously they're not digging deeper. 
they saw something surface level and it's not netting them a hundred thousand dollars a year just off rip so now they've become discouraged this is a 29 year old and they may be living in 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 a delusional state of instant gratification where because they believe they just learned something never actually having applied it not having any experienced it not laying any groundwork for a career they deserve it they don't have any certification anything any accreditation right no licenses no n- nothing nothing special going on about them <laughs> and they're worried about having to learn Everything else that comes with this computer science career they're aiming for. And they think it's painful to continue learning. I mean, if it's not something they're passionate about, I think the fact that they want a career, want a job, something that'll provide for them a life they can live that ought to be incentive enough, that ought to be emotive enough, because typically folks that aren't excited by the work and me, I'm I'm one of those that is excited by work. I well, I work for the love of the game. Right? I always say it's not so much the destination, but but the trip, but the chase, the hunt. That to me is what gets my rocks off for the most part. And this person has their eyes on the destination. But they've just barely set their sights on it and already believe they should be there. It's literally eating with your eyes, where your eyes are bigger than your stomach. And this person cannot stomach the fact that they need more. They need more training. They need more skill. They need to hone what they learn and they, they, they need to stay abreast of the novelties of newer systems, the newer programming languages that are required. I mean, personally, at this point, if they want something where I think if, if they are angling for uh, a position where they don't have to put in the type of the type of hours the type of manpower required to learn all of these languages cuz you don't necessarily need to know them all i mean there may be a a chosen few a handful that know all of these languages and are on the bleeding edge of programming but this person this person doesn't sound like that at all so either they're going to stay at the bottom j- doing jobs off of upwork or fiverr <laughs> in the gig in the gig economy or or they apply themselves if they don't want to learn the languages and still want a career in computer science become a project manager a project coordinator where you don't so much need to know the languages but just just enough jargon right now I'm, I'm putting you barely over the bar the bare minimum you need to know just enough jargon to be able to talk shop right you need to talk the talk and walk the walk so you are able to manage a team that produces deliverables that produces final products programmed works programmed deliverables continuing it says As a hobby, for the past four years, I monitor the stock market. I learned quite a lot about stock slash options trading. Probably have over a thousand hours invested in it. However, all I do is lose money. So I'm confident that this is not my call. I was just a victim of, quote, get rich quick trap. And they put here in parentheses, I still am a victim since I can't stop. (laughs) Sounds like you're an addict, bro. Sounds like you're addicted to losing. On the stock market, maybe you get a rush from placing that, 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 that option, right? 
Like that's the rush you get, and then you wait for it to to finalize, and you fucking lose money on it. You get depressed. So what do you do? You buy some more stocks. The rush you get from buying, you hope pays off by holding. And the longer you hold, <laughs> the deeper it dives and you lose money. Right? I fucked around with the stock market for a little bit, but I mean, nothing panned out. I just about broke even. So I called it then and there. I was like, this, this, this level of buying and selling, what's called the retail market, not my cup of tea because you have little to no influence. You can only ride the wave or ride headlines and then speculate on what the wave will look like. But like our hypothetical client here, if they monitor the stock market and learn quite a lot about how to track trends, then you're at the mercy. You're at the mercy of those that have actual and direct influence that impacts the prices of stocks. Continuing, it says on the other side, on the side, sorry, on the side, I also surf the internet for apprenticeships. I'm constantly applying for union apprenticeships in trades such as electric slash plumbing, HVAC, station stationary engineering stationary engineering hmm, never heard of that maybe i'll look it up stationary engineering but what i found out is that it's extremely hard to get in unless you have connections within the union and in parentheses they add they've been trying for two years now two years right so what we've got ourselves is the undecisive client right the undecisive client they're a mechanic now, and they don't want to invest any of this time that they have bullshitting with the stock market or bullshitting with apprenticeships, which a mechanic necessarily, you could move up and make as much money as a journeyman, right? Let's say you were an apprentice in a mechanic shop, but you don't want to invest the time. And with those fields, with those trades, you'll need to buy tools. In some cases, you'll need to pay for your own training. Right? You'll be investing time, money, energy, effort also. And if it's not something that excites you, you're going to be bitching and whining within six months. How long have you been a mechanic for? It says, hold on, hold on. I currently work as a mechanic and I really do not enjoy the work. I am not even good at it. Okay, so they don't even tell us what their background is. They don't tell us their educational or experiential background, what other experience they have. But give it six months in any one of these other jobs and you'll they will be just as miserable, the hypothetical client. This is one of those individuals, one of those persons. What they require is more discipline and passion, the discipline to do better work. Now, I'm not judging the way they were raised. I know nothing about what sort of structure they might have been given when they were younger. But this is one of those instances where it behooves the client to be a better mechanic for the simple reason that you make more money the better mechanic you are, right? That's what they want. They want to make money. They want to move up, provide for a life they can live. <laughs> and if they want to improve themselves in the position they are in currently and will hold themselves out as being a shitty mechanic, what prospects do they have that if they jump into the computer science industry that they're going to be a shitty programmer and they don't want to improve themselves. How much time and effort, how much time and energy do you think they put into a, an internet search on what it takes to work on not just one type of car, but all, all the types of car domestics, imports, European, Americans, Japanese, Asian, 
what makes you think that they investigated any of that? So that they also made a list and could demotivate themselves even further. Oh, but I learned, I, I did some research and the further I looked, the more I learned that you need to know how to work OBD2 sensors, how to read codes, how to fuck. And I only know how to work on this one particular type of car. There's European systems, Asian systems that work on, need special tools, right? It's never ending. It's never ending with people who, who haven't tasted, who haven't felt professionalism, who haven't recognized the benefits of professionalism. You want to be better? In any area that you work in. Regardless of who you work for. Because ultimately you will end up working with them. It's imperative. Continuing here. They say. Please don't tell me. Please don't tell me. What I need to do is quote. Really think about what excites me. (laughs) or what my quote interests are or anything similar. I've been asking those questions for the past five years. Well, I mean, I didn't, I didn't give any of those opinions. Did I to have them think, think deeper. What are you really passionate about? What really interests you? Nah, 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 nah. I said, be professional. You fuck face. (laughs) Be better at what you do now. Before you jump into something else and fuck that up too. What you need is discipline, right? I mean it in the least offensive way possible. You walk into our office, you sit at our table and you ask us this question. You should expect a little banter, right? If you have a drink in your hand, a a joint, I don't know what you do to unwind. Maybe you're listening to us. While you work, while you drive. This is the type of conversations I wish that I had when I was 18. Shit, when I was younger, when I was 16. I mean, by 18, I was already, I was already running amok in the streets. Nothing to be proud of. It wasn't until I hit... 20, maybe 20. Yeah, I'd say about 20 when I started straightening up. Putting my ideas down on paper. And then formalizing them to something tangible. Something that actionable. They say, please don't tell me any of this. <laughs> I have been working, I have been asking, I have been asking those questions for the past five years. They give me anxiety attacks now. Oh, oh dear, watch out. Because I simply don't know what I would enjoy to do for eight hours a day. Fam, some folks don't enjoy work. It's a labor, it's laborious. Whether it's physical or whether it's mental, it's labor, right? Some folks want to be good at what they do so they make enough money so they can live a life they can live where they have hobbies, where they have actual interests they can indulge in. It's not, it's sometimes, most times for some, for most, it's not something you do while you work. You're at work to get work done. And you do so because you're a professional, at least aspiring to be the consummate professional. Now, maybe, maybe if you changed your mindset, maybe if you pivoted and sought to be a better professional, really internalize the meaning of being a consummate professional who takes what they do seriously, who takes pride in the work that they do. You might find it interesting. You might 
find it interesting the steps you take to improve your skill. The steps you take to improve your image. The moves you make to improve your reputation. And then you take a step back and you realize you've developed a network. I mean, that to me is interesting. I'm passionate about that. And from there, you've got yourself a network of support, both professional and sometimes social. If you choose to go off and and play, Right? You don't have to work 24-7. 9 to 5, 8 to 5, I guess. 9 to 6 sometimes. But a lot of professionals and clients that we've met work during the day so that they can devote their off time to doing things that they like. They say, I'm continuing here, because I simply don't know what I would enjoy to do for eight hours a day. That's, I mean, that's fucking sad on your part. But you're 29 years old, I would say you need discipline. Somebody needs to whip your ass into shape. But sometimes, sometimes old dogs can learn new tricks. But I'm not saying, I'm not saying it's too late for you. I'm just saying if nothing inspires you, nothing inspires you, nothing excites you, nothing interests you, and you haven't realized or recognized the necessity of being a professional, the necessity of just improving yourself via your professional development. (laughs) It's going to be one tough uphill climb for you, my friend. It says, the only conclusion that I came to is that I want a job that pays enough to cover the bills, technical, and has to do with it being at one place, stationary. So they want to do something technical. They want to do something stationary. What, to me, it sounds like they don't want to do any manual labor. They think they can skirt. They, they, can, they, can, they can skirt the manual labor part or having to commute anywhere right i mean it's not a pretty image they're painting they're painting something sedentary something slothly something lethargic where you just they're gonna be uh like a like a just lazing just, just lazing lounging they they continue I wish I could just go from one job to another and try different things. I mean, that's essentially what you're doing, is it not? Are you applying to other places? Are you interviewing? Again, these are questions we would be asking the hypothetical client if we had them in an interview. What other places have they applied to? What other places have they interviewed with? You don't necessarily have to work with the place to know what it is they do. You could interview them. I've done that before. Interview them. Ask them to donate a little bit of their time. What it would take to interview you. 20 minutes, an hour. And then based off information you get from them, you're back on the internet. Researching what it takes to learn and do what they do. What they pay their top executives for. (laughs) <laughs> I get the feeling though. I you know, I I get the uh, the nagging feeling that there's going to be a lot of technical work, a list of it, item after item of shit they have to learn. Whether on the job or something they could learn off the job. Again, again that is going to demotivate them, right? It's not until They get beat down by life. It's not until they choose to reach out and actually pay for this advice. And to some extent, they need to hit rock bottom. 
of their professional development. They have to be as if without options to really want to reach out and hear some some stark realities, some sobering truths. Is that not all fields, not all walks of life provide for their passion, provide for an individual's interests and excitement and pleasure. Work is work, baby. And you either like doing it or you are professional enough to take care of business so that business can take care of you while you are off enjoying your time away from work. (laughs) It says here, I'll finish up here. It says, I wish I could just go from one job to another and try different things, but holy crap, it's so damn hard to find an entry level job. All right. Well, I kind of answered that before I even read that, right? You can interview them and find out what it is they do. Notice how this whole time I haven't said, leave the mechanic job, right? Because I think within there, we could find a way for them to uh, move around. But as a mechanic, I'm well aware that most have their own toolbox. Most have their own special tools and equipment, memberships to certain tool trucks, that sort of thing. There's an investment that goes into that too. Whether or not you're good at it, you can improve. But this person just glossed over the fact that I'm shitty at doing mechanic work. And then was like, oh, I also tried computer programming. I also tried trading on the stock market. I also looked into apprentices, apprenticeships, and everything is shit. (laughs) No, none of that is. Not even being a mechanic. It's just you have shit ethic. You have shit discipline. Right? And that may offend you. That may trigger you. You may say, who the fuck are you to judge? It's not judgment. It's an observation. (laughs) It says here, but holy crap, it's so damn hard to find an entry-level job since every job post has such a long list of requirements and nobody, no one wants a fresh nobody. No one wants a fresh nobody. But notice how how they state that Every one of them has a long list of requirements. If they have a long list of requirements, then what the fuck do you need an interview for? You have a long list of shit that you need to learn anyways. (laughs) You you literally, you are a nobody. You are a nobody trying to, to get their livelihood taken care of on somebody else's time, somebody else's monies, somebody else's energy. You're a fucking nobody. Tell me why I should do that. What value are you giving me in exchange for setting you up for life? And if it's nothing, if it's nothing, you deserve to be shit. A shit mechanic, a shit computer programmer, a loser in the stock market, and not even an apprenticeship. Something that you are sorely overlooking as a mechanic. Because journeymen that I know, journeymen... Make easy money. Easy money. You know what it takes? The very minimum, at the very least, is disciplined. If you don't have a passion. And I've met some passionate mechanics. I met passionate mechanics with no discipline. And disciplined mechanics with no real passion for it. They're just good at it. Or they've become good at it. They've made themselves. They've improved at it. To a point where they know what they're doing. But it's just a job. Like any contract. You're in and out. You're not necessarily making friends with the clients. Unless unless you're sociable like that. And there's nothing wrong with it. But at the very least you need some degree of discipline. To commit yourself. The conviction to see it through. And they end with saying, if you read this far, just know that I appreciate you and thank you. 
No, 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 no. We appreciate you for exposing this vulnerability. And we thank you for asking this question that, that I'm sure nags at a lot of people. I think the last episode we just had was, do you like your job or, or, or how, how do you like, how can you like your job? Can you like your job? I think it was two episodes ago, season eight, episode two, I believe it was. Whether or not it was possible to like your job, they're asking this. It was season seven, episode 30. My apologies. And it is possible, but it takes discipline. And in some instances, it's not even getting the job done. It's not even about making the customer happy sometimes. It's about you knowing you can do the job right and you acting to get it done. Sometimes it's not the destination. For most, it might be. For, for others, it might be the journey, the path to get there, the process, the mechanisms in play, the procedures, the operation, being not just the tip of the spear, but the whole fucking shaft. <laughs> it touches people in a certain way. And those certain people, regardless of what it is about their job that they like, it's founded on discipline. And whether they know it or not, whether they can express it, it's the search for attaining that state of consummate professionalism. You see, that's... That's some corporate cowboy shit. You can't just teach. Sometimes you can learn it. Sometimes it's just a doubt on you. And sometimes you have to pay for it. If you feel if you feel like you need to, reach out to us. I, I said our rates are more than reasonable. Given what you have to gain, you have nothing more to lose. What you're the shitty job you claim you have, the shitty career you're about to abandon, <laughs> those aren't the shitty areas of your life. You should be asking yourself. <laughs> All right, man, I'll stop beating around the bush. I'll catch up with you guys later.